These scenes are the British curling team winning gold at Salt Lake City in the 2002 Winter Olympics. Curling has always been one of Scotland's national sports and I'm meeting a man who knows more than most about it, David Smith. I played all the sports you could think of at school as a young lad, but I'd never had a go at curling. I feel I've missed out, really. But hopefully, this meeting with David would be a big insight into what the sport's all about. Hello, David, it's Paul. I recognise you well from television. Can I come in? in? They said you had an amazing collection of curling stones, and my word, they've taken over the whole of the entrance hall. Absolutely incredible. How many have you got? At least 300 at the last count. <laughs> but the stones are only part of it, although they are perhaps the most obvious. I've yeah. got uh, medals and mm -hmm. books and pictures and things. Why don't you just go and have a look? OK, I'll go this way then. Yep. David, these look quite old. Tell me about these on the stairs. This is the earliest form of curling stone. We call them liffies because they were held in the liff or the palm of the hand. And that's the lithy? That's the liff. The lith. The liff is the palm. Yeah. There's a hole in them for a thumb and yeah. a groove uh, on the other side for holding it. And they were thrown a bit like coits. You'd have had to have been a giant to pick that one up and play with it. This one is so big, it must have been a big gorilla who oh, used it. That's a hell of a weight. It's, a, it, it, it's very oh. heavy, yes. <laughs> this one's dated. 1699. Yes, I'm a bit suspicious yeah, always uh, of dates. Of I would be as well. Old stones. One. But it but has got some age. Yes, indeed. That is a 17th century stone as well. That's more like your standard Liffey. Yeah, that's it, a decent it, size. You could pick that one up and indeed, move it around. And puddle it. Well, they really have evolved, haven't they? Look what they've turned into. The ones on the bottom tread down there. I find them aesthetically very Pleasing. satisfying mm -hmm. and uh, the modern cuddling stone is so machined and so on that the game is an awful lot more accurate yeah. than it used to be. Yeah. During the 1800s, curling was the most popular sport in Scotland. It wasn't until the 20th century that football and golf took over. Now let's have a look in this nest of drawers. It's like a little collector's cabinet. Gosh, look at that. It is full of curling handles. There must be hundreds of them. And look at this. Dozens of paperweights and inkwells in his collection. Look at that one. That is a real gem. And I've got to show you something. This here is the smallest stone in David's collection. Well, David, we're in your living room. It's a wonderful room. It's probably one of your favourite rooms, and it should house some of your favourite curling stones here. Talk me through some of them. Well, this stone here with the yeah. silver handle mm -hmm. is one of a pair that is really special. In fact, it was so special that uh, when I brought them home, I felt able not to smuggle them into the house, but to display <laughs> them openly to my wife. The handles are beautiful, actually, and if you look really carefully, you'll see that they're covered with beautiful engravings of thistles. They're made of serpentine from a place near Creef in Perthshire. Yeah. Um, and serpentine polishes up into a beautiful, beautiful stone. So they're purely for decoration, really? Uh, really. Although they have been played with, you can yeah. see the rough, unpolished bit round the wear. of the stone. Well, they've, they've, uh, they've had some wear. Yeah, they've been bashed. They've had some wear. Uh, but serpentine is not really suitable for the sair dance that real curling stones face up to in real games. <laughs> I was having a browse in the hall earlier, and you've got a collector's cabinet outside, a little chest of drawers, and it was full of separate handles. Are the handles interchangeable? No, in the older days, in the oldest form of the curling stone, the handle was permanently fixed to the top surface. Mm -hmm. Um, then uh, the people devised a, a, a removable handle and the idea of that was that when you finished playing a game you could unscrew the handles, put them in your pocket <laughs> and leave and then no other blighter could use your stones when you weren't there. Well, that's very clever, isn't indeed, it? Indeed. The wonderful thing about curling is that it encompasses tremendous uh, age bands. Yes. One can, you know, curl from 12 until 80 quite mm. happily. 
and keep you fit I'm, and competitive. Yes, and I've got a bit to go before I'm 80. So talk me through some of the values of a curling stone. I mean, let's say entry level, what would you be prepared to pay? And let's say for something that you really want and you must have. If you've got to buy them in shops or auctions, uh, they, you're talking maybe uh, for each stone a hundred pounds, a hundred and fifty pounds okay. if they're really special, yeah. um, and more if they're particularly special. Yeah, with a silver mount handle. Yes. Yeah. Stones are at the centre of David's collection, but he also has vast amounts of curling memorabilia. How long has it taken to amass all of this collection? Well, I've been collecting for as long as I've been playing, which is the best part of 40 years. Yeah. You're very passionate uh, about it and obsessive about oh, it. Oh, indeed. It's a very important part of um, Scottish social history. It was the game that distinguished them from other inferior races like the English. <laughs> 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 so where does it all go from here? I mean, it's going to take over the house eventually. Would you like to have everything displayed in a museum, your own museum? Yes, I would very much like to have a museum. I'm sure that my dear wife Hazel would very much <laughs> like to have a museum and be rid of all these curling stones. <laughs> and I would too, but sadly we're talking mega money. Yeah. David, thank you very much. It's an absolutely amazing and astonishing collection. I've seen quite a few on Flogger in my years, but this is up there with the best of them.